Assume that an electron is a solid sphere rotating about an axis through its center. Its rotational velocity is determined by the fact that the angular momentum due to spin is sh over 2 pi where s is 1 half and h is Planck's constant. Calculate the magnetic moment due to spin in units of Bohr magnetons on the assumption that the total charge of the electron is distributed uniformly over its surface and uniformly throughout its volume. Okay, we're going to tackle this problem in three different uh, stages. So uh, let's start with concentrating on a solid sphere here. So our solid sphere has a radius capital R. It makes an angle with respect to the z-axis, which is the rotation axis of theta. That's the polar angle. And if we take the projection of this uh, r vector to the xy plane, we see that the projection makes an angle of phi with respect to the positive x direction. That's the azimuthal angle. And when you concentrate on a surface element, you can see that uh, if you vary the angle by uh, an amount d theta, uh, r d theta is uh, basically the arc length. And at the same time, if we concentrate on the uh, projection of the r vector onto the uh, xy plane, that's r sine theta, and r sine theta, by varying this angle phi, r sine theta d phi, will draw an arc length on the uh, projection of the xy plane, on the projection of xy plane. So uh, we have two uh, dimensions here, r d theta, the arc length defined by the polar angle, and the arc length defined by the azimuthal angle, r sine theta d phi. So that's basically drawing a circle here, r sine theta and we're varying this angle and finding this uh, arc length. Now if we have the third dimension, instead of having this uh, capital R here, we have uh, a vector uh, with magnitude r from the origin. So if we vary this uh, by an amount dr, we have the third dimension. So we have r uh, dr r d theta and r sine theta d phi, which is basically defining the volume element here. So uh, let's find the area of the area element. So note that um, the area of a surface element We call this area dA is basically the area defined by these two uh, arc lengths r d theta and r sine theta d phi. So it's going to be the product of r sine theta d phi multiplied by r d theta. So when these angles are small, d theta and d phi are small, this is basically turning into approximately a rectangle. So this gives us an area r square sine theta d theta d phi. Okay, so this is our area. Now if we concentrate on a volume element, similarly the volume of A volume element dv is basically the product of these uh, three dr, r d theta, and r sine theta d phi. So we have r sine theta d phi, r d theta, and dr. Now, in order to cover the full volume, you can see that 
this uh, lowercase r should vary between 0 and capital R. So you will be moving along this line. And the polar angle theta should be varying between 0 and pi. So this is going to basically define a slice here. So you change the uh, radi radial vector from r to from 0 to capital R and then you vary the angle so you obtain a slice. Now you have to rotate this slice by an angle 2 pi so uh, the angle phi will vary between 0 and 2 pi. Okay, so uh, before we tackle this problem I want to worry about quantization of angular momentum. So let's first worry about the quantization of angular momentum. Okay, now uh, when we talk about the mass of the electron, uh, it's basically uniformly distributed throughout the volume. We only talk about two different cases for charge distribution. So charge is uniformly distributed over the surface or throughout the volume, but it's a, a solid sphere. And basically, we are assuming that the in, in both cases, the mass of the electron is distributed uniformly. So since the mass of the electron, which I'm going to call m sub e, is uniformly distributed throughout the volume we can write the mass density rho sub m as mass of the electron m sub e divided by the volume of the sphere 4 thirds pi capital R cube. So this allows us to write the mass of a volume element so that we can write the mass of a volume element dv. So this is going to have a mass dm, differential mass dm, which is the uniform mass density rho sub m multiplied with the volume dv. So our uh, uniform mass density was mass of the electron divided by 4 thirds pi capital R cube. This has to be multiplied by dv. So we will obtain, uh, when we substitute for uh, dv, the volume of this volume element, mass of the electron divided by 4 thirds pi capital R cube, mass density, multiplied with r square sine theta d theta d phi dr. So this gives us a um, differential mass. If we take this 3 upstairs, uh, 3me, 3 times the mass of the electron, m sub e, divided by 4 pi capital R cube, r square sine theta d theta d phi 
the R. Okay, now uh, this mass element, dm, is rotating about the z-axis. As you can see, we have angular speed omega. Uh, so we have a mass element, dm, somewhere here that will be basically rotating around this uh, z-axis. Uh, so now dm is rotating around the z-axis with a perpendicular distance since it's located at r theta and phi the perpendicular distance will be uh, you can see here so this, if this is our uh, r, so let's say the mass element is located here, it will have a distance uh, r, uh, if it's at angle theta, of course it will be on this axis. So it's uh, the distance r, r sine theta will be the uh, distance, perpendicular distance to the z-axis. If it's on the surface, it will be capital R sine theta. So uh, this perpendicular distance is R sine theta to the z-axis and all such mass elements will have the same angular uh, speed omega at the distance uh, r from the uh, r sine theta from the uh, z axis where its corresponding tangential speed v the tangential speed will be equal to omega times r sine theta so uh, we can now talk about the angular momentum. The angular momentum dl vector for uh, will be equal to the cross product of r with uh, dm times the tangential velocity v. So R cross uh, dm v. So this is basically equal to, uh, will give us a magnitude uh, dm multiplied with R perpendicular times the tangential speed v, where we have the perpendicular distance to the z-axis R sine theta and the tangential speed is omega R uh, sine theta. Uh, because we have a distance r sine theta from the z-axis. So basically this will be uh, rotating uh, at this distance r sine theta with respect to the z-axis. Okay. So um, if we substitute here for dm, we have 3 times m sub e, mass of the electron, divided by 4 pi r, capital R cube, uh, the dv r square sine theta d theta d phi dr. So this is our dm here, uh, multiplied with the perpendicular distance r sine theta and the tangential speed omega r sine theta. So this will give us a contribution to the angular momentum dl as 3 m sub e divided by 4 pi capital R cube omega times r to the fourth power 
sine cube theta d theta d phi dr. Okay, now I have to integrate the contribution from all mass elements to find the total angular momentum. Now, the total angular momentum L will be the integral over the full volume of the sphere of contributions from mass elements dl. So this is going to be a triple integral, integral from 0 to capital R, R integral, integral from 0 to pi, theta integral, integral from 0 to 2 pi, phi integral. Uh, now we write the dl, it is 3 mass of the electron omega divided by 4 pi capital R cube. Uh, now we're going to perform the phi integral first, d phi, and then we will have sine cube theta d theta for the theta integral and r to 4 dr for the r integral. So this will give us uh, 3 times mass of the electron divided by 4 pi capital R cube times omega. The phi integral will give us 2 pi. The theta integral will give us 4 over 3. And the R integral will give us capital R to the fifth power divided by 5. And the end result will be 2 mass of the electron capital R square divided by 5 multiplied with omega. So this will be our angular momentum, total angular momentum. Now how did we reach this result? Well, let's for first worry about the R integral. 0 to capital R, R to the 4 dr is R to the fifth power divided by 5. The second integral, integral from 0 to 2 pi d phi gives us 2 pi. The third integral, the theta integral, integral from 0 to pi sine cube theta d theta. This is integral from 0 to pi uh, sine square theta times sine theta, which is 1 minus uh, cosine square theta sine theta d theta and then we have uh, u equals we're going to do a transformation of variables u equals cosine theta du equals minus sine theta d theta so the first one here is a integral of sine theta, sine theta d theta, and then minus integral of sine theta cosine square theta d theta, if we distribute this. Integral of sine theta d theta is minus cosine theta. So that's easy. That will be evaluated between 0 and pi. And then we have plus the integral 0 to pi uh, cosine square theta minus sine theta d theta, which is our u square du. And this will give us a minus cosine pi is 1. And cosine 0 is 1, so minus minus 1 becomes plus 1. And then we have u cube over 3, which is cosine cube theta over 3. Uh, which will be evaluated between 0 and pi. So this gives us 2. Cosine cube pi is basically uh, minus 1 over 3. And then we have another minus cosine cube 0 over 3, which is minus 1 over 3. So 2 minus 2 over 3 gives us 4 over 3. So this is what I have uh, substituted 
here 4 over 3 for the theta integral, 2 pi for the phi integral and r to 5 over 5 for the r integral. Okay, and now this angular momentum is quantized. So uh, how do we take that into account? Now, this is quantized. So that we have 2 over 5 mass of the electron, capital R square, omega, which you can notice here is actually the moment of inertia with respect to z-axis rotations, I sub z times omega. And this is quantized as S h bar where s is equal to 1 half, so it's h bar over 2. So this was mentioned in the problem statement. s is 1 half, h is a Planck's constant, s h over 2 pi or s h bar, the angular momentum is quantized. So we have h bar over 2, therefore we see that our angular speed, omega, is uh, basically equal to 5 h bar 5 h bar divided by 4 mass of the electron capital R square so we're going to uh, utilize this result in the solution of part A and part B we need to know how the angular speed is um, quantized because the angular momentum is quantized so angular speed is 5 h bar over 4 m sub e r squared okay so we're going to continue part with part a in the next video so here what we have done is basically we have concentrated on a solid sphere with a polar angle theta as a mutual angle phi uh, we have written the area of an area element, r d theta, r sine theta d phi. So that is found by uh, varying the angle phi and calculating the arc length for this circle that we are drawing here. And for this circle, we have r d theta. So these two give us the area element. For the volume element, we have a... Uh, uh, radial distance r from the center now we have we can vary also this radial distance by an amount dr so in addition we have the same thing here r sine theta uh, circle will give us r sine theta d phi and r d theta will give us the other dimension so the volume element has a volume r square sine theta d theta d phi dr and the ang angle should be varied between uh, 0 and pi for theta so that we obtain a slice here when r varies between 0 and capital R and that slice has to be rotated by an angle 2 pi to cover the full sphere. So uh, the mass density because we're assuming a uniform mass distribution throughout the volume is the electron mass divided by the total mass and the mass element dm will have a differential mass dm rho times dv so that's what we have calculated and the angular momentum due to this mass element is r cross dmv which has a magnitude r sine theta the perpendicular distance times the tangential speed omega r sine theta dm uh, and because all of these guys are rotating about the z-axis all the angular momentum vectors are uh, pointing in the uh, plus k hat direction so they can simply be added to calculate the total uh, magnitude so we integrate the contribution from each mass element uh, over the sphere volume because they're all in plus k hat direction they add up uh, and uh, by substituting the dl value we have found here we need to perform the integral for r theta and uh, phi and these integrals will give us, um, for r to 4 
dr we have r to 5 over 5 the phi integral because nothing else depends on phi here just gives us a constant 2 pi and the sine cube theta d theta integral we have to do a transformation of variables by calling u a cosine theta and du minus sine theta d theta this is to perform not the integral sine theta d theta but the integral minus cosine square theta sine theta d theta which gives us u cube over 3 which is cosine cube theta over 3 so the end result is 4 over 3 and we obtain 2 over 5 mr squared over 2 over 5 mr squared uh, multiplied with omega equals l this is actually the moment of inertia iz times omega which is quantized as sh bar over sh over 2 pi so remember what we call h bar is the Planck constant a h uh, Planck constant h divided by 2 pi this is our h bar so we obtain finally our angular speed 5 h bar over 4 mass of the electron r squared.